symmetry. In this video, we are going to learn about line symmetry. If a figure can be folded along a line so that the two halves exactly match each other, that means when we fold about that line, both the parts overlap each other, then that figure is said to be symmetric and the line about which it can be folded is called the line of symmetry. For example, in this figure of a pencil, if we draw a line passing through the center like this and fold this figure about the center line, then both the halves will exactly match each other. So this figure, this drawing is said to be symmetric and this central line is the line of symmetry. Let us see these figures. We cannot find any line about which these figures can be folded to match both the halves. So these figures are not symmetric. They are called as asymmetric figures and so they don't have any line of symmetry. The figures which are symmetric can have one or more than one line of symmetry. Let us see with the help of some examples. This is a square and a square has four lines of symmetry. If we fold along this line of symmetry, both the parts must overlap. Let us see. Let us fold the square along this vertical line. You can see that both the halves are overlapping each other. Similarly, for this horizontal line, both the parts are overlapping each other. So these two lines are lines of symmetry. Similarly, the lines along the diagonals also are line of symmetry because this figure, this square can be folded to overlap the both halves along these diagonal lines also. So a square in total has four lines of symmetry. Now let us see a rectangle. Rectangle has two lines of symmetry, vertical and horizontal because we, when we fold along these lines, both the parts overlap. What about the diagonals? Let us see. These two are the diagonal lines and let us see by folding the rectangle along these diagonal lines. We can clearly see that both the halves do not overlap each other. So the diagonal lines in a rectangle are not lines of symmetry. A rectangle has only two lines of symmetry. Now for a parallelogram. A parallelogram is a quadrilateral having both pair of opposite sides parallel and equal. It has no lines of symmetry. Let us see why. Fold along these lines. Do the parts overlap? No, they don't overlap. Okay, so these lines are not lines of symmetry. But if we have a special type of parallelogram called the rhombus. A rhombus is a special type of parallelogram having all sides equal. So a parallelogram, sorry, a rhombus has two lines of symmetry, but they are not these lines because when we fold along these lines, the parts are not overlapping. But along the diagonals, you can see if you fold the rhombus along its diagonals, then both the parts overlap each other. So the diagonal lines in a rhombus are the lines of symmetry. So rhombus has two lines of symmetry. Let us see about triangles. Now we can have three types of triangles on the basis of the length of its sides. If a triangle has all the three sides of different lengths, as you can see in this triangle, then this is called a scalene triangle. And a scalene triangle has no lines of symmetry because there is no such line about which it can be folded to overlap both the halves. If a triangle has two lines of equal length, then it is called an isosceles triangle like in this figure, these two lines are of same length. So a isosceles triangle can have one line of symmetry. When we fold along this line, both the parts of the triangle overlap. So a triangle which is isosceles has one line of symmetry. If a triangle has all the three sides of equal length, then it is called an equilateral triangle and it has three lines of symmetry. These are equilateral triangle and it has three lines of symmetry each passing through its vertices and joining the midpoint of the opposite side. You can see that the figure can be folded to overlap along these lines. So it has three lines of symmetry. Now let us see a circle. A circle is collection of all the points which are at equal distance from a center point. It can have infinite lines of symmetry because it can be folded about any one of its diameter to overlap the remaining half. So all the diameters of the circle are its lines of symmetry. Let us see this circle. Fold it about this diameter. Both the parts are overlapping. Let us fold about this diameter. Now also both the parts are overlapping. If you fold them along any diameter, the two parts will always overlap and there are infinite direct diameters in a circle. So a circle has infinite lines of symmetry. A regular polygon is a polygon having all the sides of same length and all internal angles are also of the same measure. Such polygons have as many lines of symmetry as the number of sides. We have already seen two regular polygons. This is a regular polygon, a regular triang triangle having all the three sides equal and all the three angles equal. So a equilateral triangle is a regular triangle, regular polygon. So it has three sides. So it will have three lines of symmetry. 
Similarly, a square is also a regular polygon of four sides because all the four sides are equal and all the four angles are equal. So, because it has four sides, it has four lines of symmetry. Each polygon, which is regular, has as many lines of symmetry as the number of sides. Let us see some more regular polygons. We have a pentagon, hexagon, heptagon, octagon, nonagon and decagon. And all these are having same length of sides and same internal angles. So these are regular pentagon, regular hexagon and so on. So they have 5 lines of symmetry, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10 lines of symmetry. We have seen the lines of symmetry of some two dimensional shapes. Let us see the lines of symmetry of capital English alphabets. We can see that there are some alphabets which have only one vertical line of symmetry such as A, M, T, U, V, W and Y. Some alphabets have a horizontal line of symmetry such as B, C, D, E, K and there are some alphabets which have both horizontal and vertical lines of symmetry as in H, I, O and X. Some alphabets don't have any line of symmetry such as F, G, J, L, N, P, Q, R, S and Z. Now there is a difference in the way of writing for some English alphabets. For example, we can write B like this as well as like this in which the upper circle is smaller than the lower circle, lower half circle. Similarly, K can be written in two different ways. O can be written as an oval as well as a circle. Y can be written with a vertical line or with a slanting line. So if we have a different way of writing these alphabets, the line of symmetry also may vary. For example, this B has one line of symmetry, but this B does not have any line of symmetry. This K had one horizontal line of symmetry, but this K does not have because the upper part is smaller and the lower part, lower line is bigger. If O is written as an oval, it has horizontal and vertical two lines of symmetry, but if it is written as a circle, it has infinite lines of symmetry. If Y is written like this, it has one vertical line of symmetry, but if we write Y like this, we don't have any line of symmetry. So I hope you all must have understood about line of symmetry. Thank you for watching this video.